Emulation performance now on the new Samsung Tab S8 Ultra. With the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, how much of an improvement are we going to see? So I will be testing out PlayStation 2, Dreamcast, GameCube, PSP and N64 performance on this with the emulation. Now my base model here has just Wi-Fi only, so it's not the 5G version, 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. Before I get into those emulation tests, I just wanted to point out here that we do get a bit of throttling with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 here with Samsung. In their hands, they tend to throttle it quite early. In fact, from the very start, it doesn't seem to turbo the GPUs high or hold the turbos as what I've seen in Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 phones. So you can see performance wise, it starts to really throttle down around five minutes into pushing it really hard remains quite steady, but then it starts to come back a little bit. And you can see here the frame rate with the performance there. It's uh, up and down all over the place. So it's not peak Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 performance. Sadly, even though the thermals are really good, I do feel that Samsung could push it a little bit harder in this. Taking a look at the Antutu score too, you'll see that it could be higher there, right? Okay, now I've seen a Snapdragon 888 get almost very similar scores to that in a phone. But I've seen other phones now with this chipset that are able to achieve over a million points. That's just to point out that it could actually perform just so much better, which is a little bit disappointing. So I'm going to launch everything from the game launcher in the priority mode to get maximum performance here. So the first one I'm going to test out is one of my favorites is PPSSPP, which is the PlayStation Portable Emulator. And it's running perfect here. So this game is using the PSP's high resolution mode. So that's why it's capped to 30 frames per second. But it's really steady, excellent performance, and really not much point in me spending too much time with this one. You can just see that it is going to run great. All the games really that you throw at it. Plenty of performance from this Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Okay, now we'll test out one other game. God of War here. So this game looks absolutely fantastic considering how old it is. And this was on the PlayStation Portable, of course, but had almost pretty much PlayStation 2 level of graphics. So we are looking at around 60 frames per second. I have seen it get down to 51, but excellent performance here. You see a bit of a frame dip just then. And I always play the start because that is really one of the most demanding parts here because it's rendering so much. We've got the ships in the background. Let me just see if I can shoot that ship now. And this is not lagging out at all. Maybe this bit will, no. Still really good performance. Then the next emulator is Dreamcast. This one's quite popular. And the one I'm gonna use for it, I know there's a few others out there, but is Redream, which is not showing up there for some reason, but here I have it, Redream. Now this is a very slick Dreamcast emulator. It looks absolutely great the way the UI is laid out. Now the settings I'm going with here, you can of course adjust this, but I've I put the resolution up a little bit because I just like it to look a little bit sharper and everything else really is standard there, okay, with the settings and the region while well, I just kept all of that stuff there the same. So Marvel versus Capcom 2, we'll see how this one runs and performs on it. Okay, so let's jump into a game here. I almost got this run. I can't remember the controls on this at all because it's been so long since I've played it. Okay. So as expected, this is really so easy for the system to be able to run this because it's just 2D sprites here, no stress at all. So a constant 60 frames per second. I don't see it dipping down at all, no. So I'll test this one out. Now, just to point out, I do have the paid version, the pro version, okay, here, which is about 10 US dollars, but it is well worth it. Okay, yeah, so I'm tackling some zombies right here that are having a good munch on me, and the game's very dark here at the start. You can't really see much at all. Can't even remember where to go. Controls are pretty poor with this part. Oh, okay, got those ones there. 
It's really hard to control. You just got to go left, forward. Don't even remember these controls. But look at the frame rate. It's just a solid 60 frames per second. So Dreamcast performance. I won't let you suffer with more of my terrible game play. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's just chewing on me again. Oh, got me. Okay. Looks like I'm dead there. So that's enough of my bad gameplay. But Code Veronica just runs fine on this. PlayStation 2 emulation now. So this is called Aether SX. This PS2 emulator, a lot of you recommended that I try it from the last one. So that's why I made a quick change to this video. So the game I'm testing out here is called Colosseum Road to Rome. And the frame rate, you can see there's been a few dips there, but the actual gameplay looking super good. This is very quick, smooth, fast, no real problems. And dipping down just a little bit that frame rate, but right now it's looking around the lowest there of about 54 frames per second, but very steady. Oh, these NPCs are incredibly hard. Well, I can see I'm losing this battle already. Burnout 3 takedown now. So this is a steady, smooth, solid 60 frames per second. And you can see that the CPU is at about 60% load. Oh, I can't believe it didn't manage to take me down. So just 60% load on that CPU. It's not really stressing out this Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 here at all. Let's see if I can get a little bit of boost. Some near misses. Oh. And that was some very, very poor driving. So yeah, this game not a problem, and it looks like the PlayStation 2 emulation with the Tab S8 Ultra is just rock solid. Very good performance here. On to our Nintendo 64 emulation now. So this is M64 Plus FZ that I'm testing. Now I've got the rendered resolution set to 720p. Now you can lower this down to improve the performance, but I want to test out and see how it's going to run a demanding game like GoldenEye, which I'll jump into now. So this is looking good. Oh, down to 19. So a bit of a lag. 16 frames per second. 15 around this area where it tends to choke a bit. So I really do need to lower that render resolution down. This guy in the bunker here especially, look at that, 12 frames per second. Oh, it's just getting too laggy. Very laggy. So I'll lower the resolution down and we'll test this area again of the map. Okay, so I've set it now to 800 times 600 that should hopefully get rid of that lag or at least give us a more playable frame rate. Okay, so this area is still a little bit too choppy. It's around 20, 19, 18 frames per second right now. And I've got, oh, a few explosions going on. It's definitely lagging things out here. So not ideal performance. I would love to see this at 30 frames per second. So certain areas on the map, yes, are going to be a little bit choppy and laggy, even at 800 times 600. Mario 64. So this is running at 30 frames per second, but I'll just jump into our first level. So continual solid, just 30 frames per second. It sometimes hits around 29, 28, but it's looking very, very good. Much better than what I remember with the tab S7 Plus. Finally, GameCube now. So this is Soul Calibur 2 that I'm loading up here. And the emulator is Dolphin. It's pretty well known. I think most people would know this one. So I'm just going to go straight into a game here. Now I do have uh, the graph here enabled so we can see the frame rate here and the load on the CPU, which really doesn't actually get up to much. I don't think it's using, definitely not using all of the cores here. Okay, so let's see how this performs. Now, it's getting down to, you can see, about 40 frames per second there. So a few dips here with this level. But overall, quite playable, considering how the GameCube is really demanding emulation. Uh, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is handling this pretty well. Okay, quite a bit of a dip just then before, down to about 42 frames per second. 
Now I haven't tweaked any of the settings. It's the OpenGL render. It's all the default settings here, okay? So I didn't bother to change any of that. Super Mario Sunshine. So this is a reasonably demanding game and we're getting around 30 frames per second. Now I've seen some pretty bad frame dips uh, where it goes down to about 25. For a split second, you get quite a bit of lag, but here in town with all the NPCs around and whatnot, you can see this is actually looking pretty good. Not bad performance here. And this is definitely the best that I've seen this game run. So really great emulation performance there, especially from the PlayStation 2 emulator. That one is such an improvement from what I remember when I tested it previously with the Tab S7 Plus. With the new chipset running a lot better, and of course the new version of Damon PS2, that game that I tested out, which is Colosseum Road to Rome, was normally before super slow the gameplay, the game speed is now at a normal kind of speed and it's running really fast. And then the PSP performance, great, perfect. N64 looking really good as you saw there with Mario 64. GameCube as well, great, and Dreamcast not a problem. So it is an absolute emulation beast to this particular tablet. That super immersive 14.6 inch Super AMOLED screen is such a joy to game on. And as long as you're gaming, of course, with a controller, you get yourself a stand or using it in the keyboard case, it's gonna be a great experience there with emulation. So thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you do catch my two other videos so far on this particular Tab S8 Ultra. That is my first impressions video and I do a stress test to see how much does the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 throttle in this tablet. That's with 3D Mark Extreme Stress Test and Tutu and Genshin Impact gameplay. So do check that out and subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.